Okay, welcome back to Denison Scripting Tutorials. I'm going to try to wrap up the simple quest in this video so that by the end of it you have a fully functional quest that you can, you know, build upon and add some character to and have something to put on your server. Um, I want to go back and make a few revisions to the quest, or the, not sorry, revisions to the script we've made so far just to make it a little cleaner and um, we'll start off by renaming the assignment script um, what I was making the example originally didn't matter so much but in this case you know you want to have something that makes more sense um, you know quest assignment or um, if you had a name of it you know it could be gold bar quest you know whatever um, you know, you just want to have something that's more unique and less um, generic. And then the script itself, you know, we want to do like gold bar start or something of the sort. Um, but the important thing for when you change the interact script name is you want to make sure you change it here also so that your assignment script. Um, assigns the proper interact script and also make sure that when you assign the script that you're assigning this name and not assignment anymore because we've changed that um you know this is just make it a little cleaner for the final copy um i didn't want to get too much farther ahead without that being addressed also i'm going to try to stop saying um so much it's my go-to move so hopefully i can clean that up a bit um the Oh, there we go. The first thing I want to do is uh, change what the second step does. We're going to introduce a couple different concepts here that are going to potentially be kind of confusing. I'm going to explain them as best as possible, but it, it's by no means the most complicated thing you're going to run into. So, the second step is the one that's going to have all of our logic per se it's going to um check circumstances or check um different things to see how the npc should react um in this case you need to check if it has gold bars and to do so we're going to use what is it if Actually, in the case of tags like this, I'm going to give you a quick little note. If you go into the IRC room, you can use a handy bot that will explain the different tags. Um, in this case, we need inventory tags. So he finds all the inventory tags. And um, the one we're using right here is going to be inventory contains item quantity. And there's more trying to show off spaz. Um, so we need dot contains and dot quantity. Um, here we go. So the inventory dot contains and dot quantity. So we're going to be checking for gold ingots and checking for quantity 10. Um, the gold ingots comes from the bucket materials. If you go to Google and type in bucket materials, then the first result is the Java doc that lists all of the items in the game and how Denison references them most of the time. You can also search for Minecraft item IDs and I believe the first couple things will come up with different ways for you to check item IDs. This will also work the decimal values here. But for the sake of this, we're just going to use the word gold ingots. I think it's actually gold ingot. And we're looking for quantity of 10. So what this command says so far is if the player inventory contains 10 gold ingots, this tag will return true. So if it's true, 
then we want to you know, we're going to want to do some stuff here and then if it's not true it should be else we're going to do this stuff but what are we going to do if it so if it's if it's not true for the else section, all we need to do is chat and say, oh, come back when you have 10 gold bars. You know, it's just the generic response for if the player does not have the gold bars. Um, yeah, you, know, you can change that up a little bit to make it a little more lively, but anything you put in this section, any other command you use, will, will fire when this condition is not met. So if the player's inventory does not contain 10, they'll go to this section of code and we'll say, you know, the chats that we're putting in here. In this case, I'll use another one, we'll use narrate. give it a little more character. Um, the important part is what happens when, for when you do have them. Um, the most important thing you want to do is as soon as it realizes you have them, you want to take them away. You don't want to do too many things before taking them because the player has the opportunity to sometimes throw the items on the ground or move them around. and There's a very rare chance they can take advantage of Denison's um, shortfalls in the game and potentially um, trick it essentially but it's a rare occasion I wouldn't worry about it I would just take the item first off the convention so you can use the take command and you're taking here's another prime example of when we can use one of the bots and we can use this command take and it shows us how this it shows us the syntax for it. In this case, we're using take item. Um, so we're taking gold ingots, and we're taking quantity ten. After we take it, we want to then chat with the player. It says, "Oh, great, you have my gold." And I had to wait in there just to slow the chat down so it doesn't just spam the player. Um, this would be an appropriate time to also give them a reward. So you want to use the give command and we'll give them give them, you know, some money. Give them two hundred of whatever currency you have in your game. And that's using the give command, which you can also see if I use the IRC bot. You can get the money or items the same way. Um, if you wanted to do an item, you could make this. I don't know. Um, we'll just pull something from here. We can give them. Um, I don't know that. Give them some ender pearls. So you know you can copy this from here. And give them two ender pearls. It would be just like that. Um, and then you want to zap to your third step. And that's the, the, the next part here that we'll clear up here in a second. Step three. So just to reiterate what's happening here, because this is where it gets a little more confusing than above. When the click trigger for step two fires, it has to check some circumstances. It checks if the player's inventory contains 10 gold. If it doesn't, it goes down here and just says, oh, come back when you do. But if it does, it takes them from the player and then says, oh, you have my gold, thank you so much, blah, 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 and it gives them a reward. 
and, the, and then it zaps to the third step so that the player can't come back and try doing this again. In the third step, we have another clip trigger. We have a script node, and the script node we judge. Thank you so much for your help earlier. You know, so that's what he's going to say every time the player comes back after completing the quest. Um, you can change that up again also to, you know, go into your next thing. You could, you could then go into another quest from there. You could do all kinds of things. This is, you know, we're going basic, so this is a one-time quest. You just go through top to bottom. The... The important thing to take away from this is how the different steps function with each other and the very beginnings of how to use if and tags. I'll probably spend an entire video just explaining how tags work because there's so many tags and so many ways to use them. The same thing with the if command. This is a very primitive way to use it, but it does show you how the braces work. And just to elaborate slightly, you'll see that they use the braces to define which sections of code um, apply. So in this case, so if it's true, everything between these two braces that are lit up red, which are these lines here, will then um, be executed. And then else, everything between these two braces will. And then just for the sake of um, closing any gaps where anything could be taken advantage of, Denison has a trick where you add a caret symbol to the beginning of a command. And what that does is bypass Denison's internal delay of a half of a second per command. So every time you have a command, it waits a half a second before executing it for the sake of um, flow, well, you know, a, a reasonable flow. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, most times you're not even going to notice it, but when you're taking and giving things and narrating things, if you're if they're not time sensitive, you normally want to make them instant using the caret symbol here, for the sake of you know no one being able to exploit that half of a second, especially when you're taking things that are important for a quest. Um, this right here is a fully complete quest. You should be able to load this up on your server and it should function um, properly. Um, you can go through and change your chats so that um, it represents a character on your server. And you can copy and paste it a thousand times and make a thousand variations of this. Where someone needs gold bars and someone needs flowers and someone needs, you know, to spawn eggs, you know, anything. And just, you know, by changing what they say and the personality of the character you're making different quests even though they're all just gathering stuff that's the basics of that and I hope at this point you understand how to create this quest the next video I think I will make will show you some variations of this how to make your if statements slightly more complicated and uh, we might get into chain quests together um, if you like the videos like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. You know, that's how YouTube works. Thanks, guys.